Spider-Man, Captain America, Thor, and of course, Iron Man. These four have been the cornerstones of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We've seen a lot of good movies in between in, within the MCU. But one thing's for sure, these big three, Thor, Cap, Iron Man, and Spider-Man, of course, have been the most consistent within the MCU. So, who has the best trilogy? I mean, this is a question I've seen all over Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. A lot of people asking and debating, so I thought I would give share my perspective on things. And honestly, it's, it's cool for me to uh, be able to talk about this because this is one of my favorite things when it comes to movie series or even TV show series. For me, one of the best things about watching different shows or movies with my favorite characters, the, the best part about that is seeing the character literally evolve. Because when you first see them, they start off as one way. By the time you get to season 12 or their fourth movie it's like this is a totally different character he's seen a lot or or she he or she has been through a lot they're totally different so i, I really like seeing the character evolve so out of thor captain america spider-man and iron man who has the best trilogy for me i'm gonna pick captain america oh hell nah bro that make you gay bro that make you gay. Captain America has the best arc across the MCU, and all three of his movies have been consistently good. Every single one. And really, for me, this is a really a, just a toss up between Captain America and Spider Man because Spider Man movies have been all consistently good, and Captain America movies have been all consistently good. Thor and Iron Man? I mean. The first Iron Man film was amazing. It's a simplistic film filled with great action, great actors, a fantastic story, and it acted as the rock of the MCU. You wouldn't have the MCU without Iron Man. It's one of my favorite movies, and it makes you fall in love with the characters in Tony Stark's world. I love you, Mew. Please try not to move. Hey. What's going on here? Let's face it, this is not the worst thing you've caught me doing. The first Thor movie was also really good. It's a whole Shakespearean aspect about the God of Thunder. It's a Cain and Abel story, it's a father-son story, and it's a love story. Two great starts. Then the sequels come. A lot of people don't like Iron Man 2. But actually, I really liked it. I liked it a lot. Not more than the first one, but I liked it. Why? Because it had more of what the first one gave us. For me, all while further building the MCU by giving us new characters and side plots that pay off in other stuff. Now, Thor's second movie, The Dark World, yikes. Honestly, I feel like that movie was just setting up an Infinity Stone. I didn't really like Iron Man 3, um, but Thor Ragnarok? That was the best Thor movie out of all three of his movies. That movie totally revamped the character. That was amazing. So you see the inconsistencies? It's like Iron Man, great. Iron Man 2, great. Iron Man, er, yeah, Iron Man 3, I almost forgot. Iron Man 3, <laughs> they dropped the ball. Thor, great. Thor 2, they dropped the ball. Thor 3, great. See, with Captain America, great, great, great. With Spider-Man, great, great, great. And honestly, like I said, for me, it's just juggling these two. And it comes so close on which one has the better trilogy. It really gets down to me literally comparing each movie to each other. It's like I'm looking for the nitty and the gritty. The Homecoming trilogy was really good. And essentially, it was about Peter Parker becoming a man and truly understanding what it really means to be a hero. I really liked Homecoming a lot. I really liked Far From Home a lot. And No Way Home acted as probably one of the, if, if not the greatest Spider-Man movie of all time. But I still think that Cap edges out. I, I mean, the first Captain America movie 
gives us everything the first two Iron Man films and the first Thor movie had, and then some. Steve Rogers has the most unique story because he's this guy at a time, and you know, he's from the 1940s, and that plays a major part of the confliction within him. He still pines for the days of the 40s while also living in the modern time trying to focus on the mission. For as long as I can remember, I just wanted to do what was right. I guess I'm not quite sure what that is anymore. And by the time you get to Captain America Civil War, all three movies come to full circle building his character arc. Through part two of his arc, which was his second film, The Winter Soldier, through the events of the Captain America The Winter Soldier, Steve learned that it's very hard to trust the government. Any power structure that wants control is potentially dangerous. And this is my favorite part about the character. Here's where his arc comes into play. At the beginning of his journey, he was a company man. He followed orders in a simpler time, in a, in a different era. If the government as a unit feels that something is for the best, you know, he's like, who, who am I to question it? And by the time you get to Civil War, he's not like that so much, you know? And I mean, it's, it's a completely natural evolution because Steve Rogers is like, you know, he remembers when the World Security Council sent a nuclear missile to New York and the Avengers had to stop it. He remembers when the organization he signed up with called S.H.I.E.L.D. turned out to be overran by HYDRA. If I see a situation pointed south, I can't ignore it. Sometimes I wish I could. No, you don't. No, I don't. It's who he is, and all of these different things have come full circle with the development of his character. His movies over time literally strips away the patriotism of his character. That is how you make a trilogy. And unlike, and this is why Cap edges out a little bit more than Spider-Man because unlike Spider-Man, Captain America's trilogy has had an overall impact on Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. And those two movies act as the entire culmination of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So just his little story, he's just a piece in that. His little story play big roles. That's my opinion. But what's yours, guys? Who do you think has the best MCU trilogy? I mean, I could find it difficult to argue with my facts, but I'm just playing. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time.